Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, hope you've all been doing well. In this video, I wanted to look at some leaks and rumors surrounding AMD's upcoming second generation Ryzen 2000 series processors for the desktop segment. At CES 2018, AMD briefly talked about these processors and did unveil that they would be launching sometime in April, so we know that they're coming relatively soon. And it was only a matter of time before leaks and rumors started to pop up. If you recall from last year, within a month before first gen launch, we saw a plethora of leaks from various sites regarding benchmarks, SKUs, pricing information, and more. I'll leave links down below for all of these so you guys can check them out for yourselves. Last week on 3 Mark's website, there were some benchmark results discovered which showed a system using a Ryzen 7 2700X processor. The TimeSpy benchmark results showed the 2700X reporting a maximum turbo clock from 4.074 to 4.174 GHz. The variation in turbo speed is probably due to the work of XFR2. There was also a Firestrike Extreme result posted, which showed the maximum turbo clock at 4.2 GHz. Taking these into account and comparing it against the first generation Ryzen 7 1700X, and we can see a difference of about 300 to 400 MHz. This is good because these results coincide with what AMD have told us about their next generation Ryzen Plus processors and what Global Foundries claims to have achieved with their 12 nanometer FinFET process. Ryzen Plus will offer up to 10% better performance over the first generation. This 10% uplift in performance will be mostly due to higher clocks, but let's also not dismiss any IPC gains due to the reduced latencies and faster communication between Ryzen's multi CCX design. Now I compared these TimeSpy and Firestrike Extreme results with my own benchmarks, and even though the 2700X is clocked higher than my 1800X system, my system still managed to pull ahead. It's nothing dramatic, but the discrepancies could be due to several things, such as slower RAM, multiple background processes, or this chip being an early engineering sample using a premature microcode. This goes without saying, but I'll reiterate it anyways, always take these results with a grain of salt. Moving on to the second leak, this one comes from a South Korean tech site called Hardware Battle, showcasing a Ryzen 7 2000 processor in various benchmarks. They don't specify whether it's a 2700, a 2700X, or a 202800. Using the Psy Software Sandra system overview, we can see information about the processor. There are some noteworthy things to point out here. First, the turbo speed is showing as 4.35 GHz, which is higher than what was reported in those 3D Mark results. So one might think that this is not a 2700X, but it's the higher 2800X. But I have reason to believe that if this is true, then it's most likely the Ryzen 7 2700X with probably an overclock applied to it. The other thing to note here is that the max core voltage is showing at just 1.25 volts. Now this could be an error with the software reporting the factory default settings, but if it is able to achieve those clock speeds, with the reported V-Core, then that would be quite impressive. Their IDA64 cache and memory benchmark with DDR4 2666MHz RAM shows a comparison between the Ryzen 7 2000 processor against the R7 1700X. This is one reason why I think it's a 2700X because they're not using a 1800X or R7 1700. Here we can see that across the board, Memory and cache latency is reduced by quite a margin, especially if you consider the L2 and L3 results. This was another area AMD needed to improve upon which couldn't be ignored, and if these leaks are anything to go by, then it looks like they did deliver. They also showed their 3D Mark Firestrike and Firestrike Ultra benchmarks, and you guys can see that this Ryzen 7 2000 processor is decently ahead of the first gen Ryzen 7 CPUs and the 8700K. They also included some Cinebench R15 results, Multi-threaded performance looks good, and with a score of 1783, that's pretty good. The highest I was able to achieve with my system was 1771 with a 4GHz overclock and my RAM at 3333MHz. And keep in mind, these guys are using slower RAM with higher latency, so the score could have definitely been better had they used a better kit of RAM. Nonetheless, it's a decent score. Now the single core score is a lot more intriguing because the Ryzen 7 2000 processor is significantly ahead of the Ryzen 7 1800X and the 1700X, and is one point ahead of the KB Lake i5-7600K, which if I'm not mistaken, has a turbo clock of 4.2GHz. 
The single core score is 60% higher than the 1700X, yet the clocks are only about 10% faster, which could be indicative of those IPC gains. This is great, as it shows AMD is starting to close the single core performance gap against Intel. This is especially important for a lot of popular games out there like PUBG, Overwatch, and CSGO. This performance increase is further backed by the results from their size software Sandra single thread test, but it shows the future processor having the best single core performance, even ahead of the Coffee Lake i7-8700K, which I find kind of hard to believe. The third leak comes from a website called El Chipuzas, which shows a whole bunch of slides which are designed in a similar fashion to what we've been seeing from AMD's conferences. Take these slides with a grain of salt as well, because I did notice quite a lot of errors and inconsistencies which would point out to them being fake. Such as the bottom left hand corner stating an NDA lift for March 15th, 2017. First slide shows Ryzen desktop processor positioning. Here we see a comparison of AMD's processors against Intel's processors. At the top we see the HEDT processors like the 1950X, which is supposed to compete with the i9-7960X. Then at the lower section shows the mainstream consumer desktop segment, with the inclusion of the Ryzen 7 and the Ryzen 5 2000 series processors with pricing. If you look at the Ryzen 7 processors, you'll see that there is no Ryzen 7 2800X. Another leak which comes from another site called Informatica Cero also shows a similar leaked slide. Now regardless of whether or not these slides are true, I would not be surprised at all if AMD decided not to include a successor to the Ryzen 7 1800X. The main reason for that is because the sales of that processor plummeted after the first month of Ryzen's launch. A lot of people, myself included, came to the agreement that the Ryzen 7 1800X doesn't offer any good value over the other two Ryzen 7 processors. This is because you can save the money, buy the cheaper R7 CPUs and overclock them yourself to 1800X levels. Then you can either use that money towards a better GPU or RAM. In my video where I talked about my experience with the Ryzen 7 1800X 3 months later, I said this, Overall, using my Ryzen 7 1800X has been nothing short of fantastic. However, if I had to do it all over again, I would have gone for a Ryzen 7 1700X or the Ryzen 7 1700 and overclocked them myself. This would have allowed me to save a considerable amount of money where I could have put that towards a future GPU upgrade or better RAM. So it only makes sense that this time around there would be two different SKUs of the R7 CPUs. The changes continue onward to the lower SKUs as well with the R5 lineup including the Ryzen 5 2600 and 2600X. No R5 2500X or 2400, the R3 lineup will have no CPUs included. This would make the most sense if AMD did take this route. Only 6 core 12 thread processors would need a refresh, as AMD have already launched the R Ryzen 5 2400G and the 2200G which perform on par with their R5 1500X and 1300X in almost all scenarios, and with the inclusion of Vega graphics, it's a no brainer to get those processors over the current existing 1500X and 1300X or 1200 or 1400. So it's smart for them to focus on what's necessary. Looking at pricing, and AMD is going to remain competitive by slightly undercutting Intel. The previous Ryzen 7 1700X and 1700 launched at 399 and 329 respectively. This slide shows the R7 2700X and 2700 at 369 and 299 respectively, with the R5 2600X and 2600 following after with the reduced launch prices when compared to the previous generation. In my opinion, if AMD were to launch at these prices, it would make the Ryzen 2000 series look very appealing. The next slide shows some specifications and there were also some things I wanted to point out here. For starters, why on earth does the Ryzen 7 2700X have a TDP of 105 watts? The 1800X launched with an advertised TDP of 95 watts, just like the rest of the X-Series CPUs. Now you might be thinking, well that's probably due to higher clock speeds, but you have to remember that they're using a newer 12 nanometer manufacturing process, which was supposed to mitigate those power draw demands. Don't get me wrong, it's not a huge deal to me, but I just thought it was a little bit odd. They also list the base and boost clocks here as well, and what do you know, the R7 2700X has its max boost clock listed at 4.35 GHz, which is what we saw from Hardware Battles benchmarks. Looking at the last column, and you'll also see that the CPUs have coolers listed with them, unlike last year where the X-Series CPUs did not come with coolers. It looks like with this generation, they'll have them included though. If AMD decided to do this, the X-Series CPUs will have an advantage going for them over the Intel's K-Series processors which do not come with coolers. 
So if you're going to be looking at those Intel K-series CPUs, you're definitely going to have to factor in the cost of an aftermarket cooler. Another inconsistency I wanted to point out was in the integrated graphics column. The 2400G has RX in front of it, whereas the 2200G does not. Another slide talks about the new Precision Boost 2.0 and XFR2, which seems to be a lot more functional than what Precision Boost 1 was. I'll be honest, this is what I was expecting from AMD's Precision Boost 1 from their first gen processors. But oh well, as someone who overclocked their system, I wasn't really reliant on it anyways. The next slide shows a table which details some information about their new X470 and B450 chipsets. Pretty much all the features are the same as the 300 series chipsets except XFR2 Enhanced and Precision Boost Overdrive are not supported by the older chipset motherboards. Now this is a little disappointing, this would mean that there will be some market segmentation of some features for people who might be upgrading from a first generation Ryzen processor that want to keep their older motherboard. The last two slides finally show some gaming benchmarks, and the information provided here is what makes me lean towards these slides being fake. The first slide shows the Ryzen 7 2700X against Intel's 6-core 12-thread 8700K processor in what is a very large gaming benchmark suite. I personally wouldn't expect something like this from AMD or another comp computer component manufacturer for that matter. To outline their weaknesses like this is not what you'd normally expect from a company, and what you'd really want to expect from them is the best case scenario with one or two benchmarks possibly being a tie at worst. Also, this is AMD. I'm surprised they opted for a GTX 1080 rather than an RX Vega 64, which performs about the same. Had they used a GTX 1080 Ti, that would have been understandable as there is no Radeon graphics card that is on par with that. But if they did use a 1080 Ti, then that 7.7% gap at 1080p would have definitely grown. There's no doubt about it. So a lot of things to consider here. The last slide shows a difference chart between the 2700X and the 1800X. Now with all things considered, higher clock speeds, XFR2, Precision Boost 2, and reduced latencies, then there shouldn't have been no scenario where the 2700X loses to the 1800X. It just doesn't make sense to me why they would want to outline that, that their last generation processor can still beat their new flagship 2700X in some scenarios. Also, in case you didn't notice at the bottom, Overwatch has the number 2 beside it. Last I checked, Blizzard didn't release an Overwatch 2. Like I mentioned, there were quite a lot of errors and typos on those slides. I'm not completely eliminating the possibility of those slides being real because we have seen official AMD slides with typos on them as well. It could have been a very early batch of slides that was sent out to the motherboard manufacturers to work with that was probably circulating around and ended up getting leaked. But there you guys have it. Quite a lot of leaks surrounding the next generation processors have started to appear and I don't think we've seen the last of them. But that's it for now. Obviously, don't jump to any conclusions or make any decisions yet until the actual NDA lifts. But if you guys like this video, then hit that like button, leave your thoughts and comments down below. And if you're interested in more content like this, then hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.